Hello everyone, my name is Juan Pablo and I'm going to talk to you about internationalization for Shiny apps. So I figured uh, maybe we could get some help from Carl since he has a mustache and apparently he speaks Italian but unfortunately uh, it didn't work out. Sorry Carl, uh, just because you have a mustache it doesn't mean you can speak Italian. So. Is there anything we can do to speak other languages uh, while using R? Yes, there is, and I'm going to talk to you about it in this uh, talk. Uh, see here a function to say hello in different languages. So that's the first step to introduce internationalization. Why do I care about it? Um, basically, a few years back, I wanted to build a an uh, interactive map of the world and unfortunately a lot of the documentation, code snippets, uh, even the databases were in English so it was um, a bit difficult for me and it took longer than expected to build this map. So it's important if we talk about language as a um, way to make our tools more inclusive uh, as most of us don't speak English as a first language and we have seen now with uh, coronavirus that uh, global issues require um, that we are prepared to communicate uh, data better especially in different languages and uh, we should try to do that um, with less effort so I do really care about making data science more accessible and especially building tools that are useful for non-coders. That's why we started working on internationalization of data apps. So, uh, how did we start? We basically look at how it works in other languages. In my case, I got inspiration from Node.js uh, and got some implementation ideas, uh, like the easiest way to make some translation of Keywords is just uh, using a dictionary uh, for UI terms. Um, we want to focus on translating common terms for data science. And I started uh, the, first, the first version of this by downloading um, genome translations for different languages. Uh, then uh, maybe we can use also YAML to allow users to implement their own custom translations. So, um, yeah, the world, the word internationalization has 18 characters between the I and the N. Uh, can we squeeze that into Shiny? Yes, we can, and that's why the name of the package is uh, like this, uh, to be read Shiny Internationalization. Cool, so let's get started. Let's install the package. Uh, it's on GitHub. There's a web page with the codes at uh, shiny internationalization dev, and there's a link to our GitHub. So before we begin, are there really 18 characters between the I and the N? I've counted it many times. I wasn't sure I was doing it right, so I wrote a small program. And indeed, it has 18 characters. Crazy, isn't it? Cool. Let's start with our first uh, app with internationalization. So the, uh, here on the right, you see uh, a small app that basically translates different terms. Uh, Hello world in different languages. Uh, this is the structure for the app of a regular Shiny app, and we gonna introduce um, some things that are needed to make the translations work. First, uh, load some code in the UI using use Shiny internationalization. Then we can introduce a language, a language switcher. Then we define our regular UI elements uh, either uh, as um, strings in the UI as we usually do, but we grab them in this function UI underscore, or uh, we put our regular uh, UI output 
as um, we do to get uh, things from the server. Then in the, on the server side, we configure our languages. Uh, see here, we can um, define a default language and the available languages we want to use. Then we have a module, a Shiny module, that allows us to uh, get the currently active uh, language that we will use to make the translations. Then uh, we just output our app as we usually do. And now we wrap everything in the i function I showed you uh, in the beginning, making sure that we pass the, the active language uh, as a parameter so it knows what language to translate the strings to. And here is the uh, full working app. Just hello world and our language. Good. So what else we can do with this? Uh, the i underscore function is the basis of everything. We use it mostly in the server. Uh, make sure, as I mentioned, to use the ui underscore in the ui. Uh, here you see an example. Uh, i underscore select the e for German and we get auswählen. Uh, then uh, the function also works with vectors, so we can pass uh, vectors of, of keywords and uh, it also works with lists. Uh, in here we can also set which keys to translate. So when we have a list with multiple items, we can define specifically which keywords to, to which keys from the list to translate. And it also works with the reactives and modules within Shiny apps. Now uh, let's look at the configuration. Uh, we saw already the default language, the available language we want to have in the app. Now uh, we can define a local directory, uh, which is basically where we're going to store our custom uh, keyword translation. Then we can define some fallbacks, which is basically where we are going to um, uh, define if a translation is not found. Uh, where it should look for. So, for instance, maybe we don't have a specific translation for a word in Portuguese, we could uh, make it fall back to Spanish. And the query parameter, uh, when we want to set the, the language through URL. Uh, here, we, we currently have 15 uh, available languages, which we can see right here. And now let's talk about how to introduce custom translations. All you have to do is create a, a local directory in which we're going to store some YAML files uh, where we will introduce some keywords and the current translations. So, for instance, see here the s.yaml, s for Spanish, and we have my slang, how are you, como estas? If we use this in the i underscore function, then we can pass the my slang dot how are you to navigate through this nested uh, YAML, and finally we get our result. We can also set the default language by URL parameter. In here, if we use show selector equals false, we don't get the selector but we cannot always use the language for Spanish in this case to load the app uh, with the predefined language. Now we can uh, look at the more, uh, the more complex da data app with translation. We have different modules and you see here it, it is in English. We can change different values we see all the UI elements transformed, even those uh, including the options right here. We change into Spanish and we see all the different texts from the UI elements, the selectors, everything translated into Spanish. Um, you may see that this doesn't look exactly like a Shiny app. It's because we're using uh, another of uh, my packages. It's called Shiny Panels, if you want to give it a try. 
Cool. So what's next? Uh, we want to give the possibility to invent your own language. So far, we work only with predefined languages. Um, this might be useful not only for Klingon, but to introduce more um, other languages that are not well documented, like indigenous languages. Uh, question, will it make it to CRAN? It will make it, but not in this shape, because I realized that the translation functionality is not only useful for shiny apps, but also for any types of reports, visualizations. So um, it will make it to, to CRAN was we, once we split the functionality, so it works with different uh, types of content, uh, like you know, maybe change look at adjusting locales and number formatting. It's something that we want to introduce later. Cool. So just get involved. Help us uh, make some memes like the ones you see right here using keyword translations. Um, please submit some issues or pull requests and help us with the custom translations and, of course, adding new languages. Uh, it all comes. Uh, just to adding new columns or a rows to this uh, UI translation CSV file, which is in the re repository, and we can get more uh, keywords, especially for data science, uh, and more languages. So thank you so much. I really hope you enjoy it and help us uh, improve the package. Bye bye.